Hi world, um, the purpose of these videos is to help inform you and to educate you on cluster B personality disorders, that is narcissist, sociopath, psychopaths, um, borderline. Um, my focus is mostly on narcissism and sociopathology. And, um, you know, I'm qualified because I'm a survivor of narcissistic abuse and, and I've spent um, the last year researching it. It's, I'm either a survivor of narcissistic or sociopathic abuse. I'm not quite sure which because obviously these people rarely ever get diagnosis because they don't go to therapists. But um, in this video, what I'm going to talk to you about is um, that you might have been or you might be in an abusive relationship and you might not even know that you are. And here's why. Um, hidden abuse, psychological abuse, is very difficult to prove and to detect. And the people who perpetuate that type of abuse, usually they have a very high IQ and they're very crafty and cunning and manipulative about it. So it's hidden abuse. You might not even know you're being abused. Um, I didn't know um, because, and part of the reason I didn't know is because um, of my own codependence, which is, you know, um, I don't have, you know, I have porous boundaries. They're not as clean as they should be. Um, and I grew up um, and I always see the best in everyone. I think everyone has good intentions. I project my own ideology on the other people, right? So um, this whole experience has taught me a lot not to do that. But um, also you might have grown up with some abuse or neglect in your family of origin. So um, it, it may feel sort of normal to you. Um, in my case, um, the, the I, you know, the cluster B relationship that I was in, the codependent enmeshed, uh, co I believe, nar covert narcissistic relationship that I was in, um, like I didn't recognize it as abuse because I equated abuse with, um, you know, physical abuse and, and verbal yelling. You know, I thought if you were being hit or yelled at, then that was abuse. I did not understand the nuances of psychological abuse. And here are some of the things to look for if you're not sure. Um, so one thing is, you know, this, the person may withhold, they may withhold affection, they may withhold sex, they may withhold compliments. When, you know, everyone around you could be complimenting you on some achievement that you made or something that you did good. And this person, um, sometimes they'll just stay silent. And when it's appropriate for them to be supportive and, and complimenting, but they won't, right? So um, that's one thing. And then um, the weapon of choice for covert um, manipulators is si the silent treatment. If you're being given the silent treatment, if you're trying to talk to this person and they are tuning you out, they are ignoring you, or they're deliberately ignoring you, if you send them emails, text messages, or phone calls and they deliberately ignore you, that is abusive, especially if it's going on over a long period of time. I looked back and realized that um, that had been going on in my relationship um, for a really long time and I just didn't realize it. I would you know, send emails and ask for a response or send a text and um, the, this person would only respond to what they wanted to and they would ignore the ones where I was asking for, you know, to get our wills done or to get my name on the title or like things like that. This person would totally, totally ignore um, certain ones that they didn't want to respond to. And I, you know, I, I don't know how I tolerated it, but I think what happens is you're like a frog being boiled in water and your expectations get managed down and managed down and managed down. They use intermittent reinforcement. So you find yourself in a relationship literally subsisting on crumbs. Like that's all there is left is crumbs. And you're like happy to get the crumbs because you know, they are always in this one up position and they are giving you this sort of, they're training you, you know, like a dog to um, accept like less and less and you're constantly trying to seek their approval. Now, um, this is especially relevant if you're a person that has low self-esteem or codependency issues where you're always, you, you think that you're supposed to, you know, earn love or earn approval. So, you know, you're, you're running after this person trying to get their love and approval by doing all these, these things 
And they, they love that. That gives them a sense of power and withholding compliments, affection, um, you know, sex, all of that is a way to erode your self-esteem and they're, they're masters of that. Um, other signs of covert manipulators are, so their silent treatment, their stonewalling. That is when you ask a direct question and they literally just look at you and maybe they blink, but they do not answer. Um, that was happened intensely um, in the last um, year of, of the relationship. And then it had happened um, for many, many, actually the whole relationship that happened, um, but it was, it was magnified and increased in the last year of the relationship, the fake relationship or whatever you want to call it, the faux relationship. Um, you know, cause th this, if this is love fraud, like these people do not love, they're not capable. They don't love you. They don't love the new source of supply. They don't love your kids. They don't love that person's kids. They don't really love, they don't really bond with other human beings. Um, for whatever reason, it could have been intense trauma, neglect as a child, or it, you know, sometimes they say narcissists are created by um, being put on a pedestal and be told, being told that they're perfect and there's nothing wrong with them and being given approval based strictly on performance. So if they perform well, then they'll get approval. And, and that's a way of objectifying a child. Um, it's actually a form of child abuse to, you know, it's almost, it's spoiling basically, but like you're, you're making, you're turning the child into a, you know, a thing, right? So sometimes that's the case. They can be created that way. Other times it's intense trauma. It could be, you know, physical, sexual, all sorts of abuse. Um, as a child, that could be the case. Sometimes it's just, um, from a parent that um, is very withholding and doesn't connect or bond with the child. There's a, it, it could be a number of different reasons, but in general, so there's, there's the um, silent treatment, there's stonewalling, there's gaslighting. Gaslighting is when they literally make you question your sanity and your reality. You may ask them, are you having an affair with that person at work? And they may look at you and say, that's absurd. And in a weird way, that isn't really a lie because you know, it is absurd that they're having an affair with a married person at work with, you know, kids or whatever the case may be. That could be one case or it could be some other scenario. It is absurd. Um, you know, it's an absurd thing to do, you know, but, um, you know, when you're supposed to be in a, you know, monogamous relationship, but, um, or they'll just lie to you straight up and say, no, that's, you, you know, you've always been jealous. You're insecure. This is your problem. You're insecure. So that's gaslighting, right? So they're making you question your reality. They're really messing with you. Sometimes gaslighting can be as deliberate as them like hiding your possessions. Um, you think you just put it there, you're looking around, you can't find it. It's crazy making. It's literally somebody who's trying to psychologically manipulate you into questioning your own sanity. And that is what they do. And that's based on, I think, a 1940s film um, where a guy was trying to drive his wife um, insane so he could take her money. Um, it's just what they do. So there's silent treatment, stonewalling, gaslighting, and gaslighting can create some serious um, psychological damage to your brain. It really can. It can, you know, cause terror, confusion, bewilderment in the person who's experiencing it because you really start to question your own sanity, your own reality. Um, so those are three. And then these people are pathological liars. Um, they lie. <laughs> They lie just for fun. Sometimes they lie because it's fun for them. It's sneaky and it makes them, it gives them a sense of power. Um, they lie by omission. Um, they lie by, you know, they can do a lot of uh, control tactics like withholding information or only giving you partial information. Um, the really cunning ones will lie, but add in a grain of truth. So it sounds plausible, right? They're, these people are master liars. Like, beyond anything you can even imagine, especially the ones that have a really high IQ. I mean, they, they think of themselves as spies, right? In their, in, in their, inner, in their relationships, they consider themselves like spies. And they, they kind of, from what I understand, from what I've read, they get off on it. So, you know, these people are pathological lies or liars. They have no problem um, cheating you out of money. They will absolutely do that. They will promise you, you know, um, yeah, we're, you know, for instance, it could be like buying a joint asset. We're buying this together. This is a team or a team. We're buying this together. This is our, you know, our property or our investment property or whatever. And then, um, you know, they may block you from getting your name legally on the title. And then they will have no qualms about um, watching you, you know, pay half the mortgage for years and years and years, maintain the house. And then literally they will say that, um, 
you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, this has never been your house. This is, we never agreed to that. They'll totally lie. Like, um, that's just an example that might occur, but um, it is absolutely, they're, they're pathological and they're lying and they have no problem duping you and tricking you. I mean, they think if you're dumb enough to be duped, then you're just an idiot. And that, you know, they, they figure everyone is, it's like a game to them. So everyone is like, a player in their game and you know they they don't mind duping you and they actually get off on it um, and they're also stonewalling sty silent treatment um, they tend to be very passive-aggressive um, they will punish you you don't even know what you're being punished for um, you know you have no idea it's very very passive-aggressive all of their maneuvering is passive-aggressive they'll smile and agree to your face that yeah I'll do that no problem and then they don't do it or they'll say um, you know what can I do? You know, this is an example um, actually happened to me, um, you know, a couple of weeks before I found out about um, my partner's long-term infidelity. Um, I was taking a course to try to cure my jealousies and insecurities because um, this person said that those were an issue in the relationship. I now realize that I was being absolutely triggered by this person. Not that I didn't bring jealousies and insecurities to the relationship because I did. I grew up in a home with a lot of trauma and um, abuse so I had you know trauma and I, I don't I didn't have a sense of security which is they they're very good at target targeting those types of people anyway they target people that have that vulnerability they can be very strong people but they you know may have had some trauma or abuse they target people like that um, so I'm taking this whole course on how to cure my jealousies and insecurities and be a better partner and there was a section in it where they asked for you know the partners of the you know, the person who has a jealousy issue to, you know, complete a, a portion of the, the coursework. And I asked, uh, you know, my partner if, if this person would do that. And this person did. Sat down on the couch, listened to a course on how to cure and help me with my problem, with my jealousies and insecurities. And it was a long course, sat and listened to the whole thing and like, Two weeks later, I found out that this person had been having an affair the whole time and been gaslighting and lying and manipulating me the whole time. Um, that is the level of duplicity that um, is, you know, that is, is um, you know, in these relationships. I mean, that is the level of duplicity that these people will go to. Um, so yeah, passive aggressive, they may smile to your face, agree to your wishes, and then absolutely sabotage you behind your back. Another thing, they're saboteurs, they love to sabotage. Like, you know, they're, they're always this underhanded, like sabotage, they'll act like they're being supportive performatively, but under the radar, they're not being supportive at all. Um, you know, I could give you many personal examples of that. Um, so, and, and you, you're confused because, well, they seem so nice and look, they're being supportive right now and you, you, you know, and, but there's something there and then you realize, you know, you look back and you figure it out that they've been sabotaging, right? Totally sabotaging because they want you beneath them. Um, often they like to create dependency because that's a way they can control. They create, they can create dependency through um, controlling the finances. They're very um, into control, right? So they like it. They love it when you're dependent on them and they have control over you and you are like forced to stay with them. But then they also hate you for it at the same time. They, they you know, demean you for it at the same time. You cannot win with these people. There's absolutely... You know, the bar just keeps moving. It doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter how loving you are, it doesn't matter how honest you are, how hardworking, none of that matters. These people literally cannot be satisfied. It's insatiable with them. They, they, they just, they're never happy. Well, it's because they're not happy inside, right? So they're not happy inside. So of course there's nothing you can do to make them happy no matter how hard you try because it's an inside job. Um, they are... Um, they always cheat. Most of the time, they literally have multiple sources of supply going on. Um, you know, the, the, the fair partner might think that this person is like monogamous to them, but they're not. They, they, they're, already, they're already securing multiple sources of supply. They have multiple relationships going on at the same time. Usually these people cannot be, they're not monogamous. They can't do monogamy. Um, they quite often have a hidden sex life, a porn addiction, it could be um, massage parlors, it could be prostitution, it could be any of those things. Um, but almost all of them, almost all of the narcissists have a problem with pornography at a bare minimum. So there's that. Um, 
you you may also see some comorbidity with substance use. It could be there could be alcohol and drugs involved as well. Not always. Um, it just depends. So yeah. So stonewalling, silent treatment, passive aggressive, um, cheating, lying. Um, they have a smug and superior attitude. They need to be one up and you're beneath. They're better than you. You're beneath them. It needs to stay that way. They need to feel superior to you. There's, they have a, it could be a very quiet, smug superiority that you don't even really recognize, but that is, you know, that's going on. They, you know, they are better than you and they, you know, they need to keep that, you know, facade that they're better than you. So they don't like it if you somehow rise above them in any way. They just secretly, they're very, very competitive. They're full of envy. Um, they don't like you. The things they loved about you in the first place, which could be that you're good with people, that people love you. Like that may have been something they said in the first place that they loved about you. And then they hate it because they're jealous and they're envious of it. They're not jealous. I don't think they're as jealous in a normal way as, as most people are about like, um, you know, you, I don't know, you going off with somebody else, although they may be, but I think it's more of like an envy sort of jealousy. They hate you because people love you and they feel entitled to that, even though they haven't earned it, because in order to earn love, you actually have to give love, you know? Um, so they're very entitled. Um, they think that if you're just in the relationship with them, like that's a gift. They, they think that they are a gift, just being there, right? So they're just, you know, you're, you're lucky to have them. They're just incredibly entitled people. Um, it, it's really difficult to deal with them. And of course the coverts, they do this all internally. They do it all very subtly. It's very sneaky. They're very sneaky. They're very secretive. They usually have their phone locked. They're very crafty about how they do all of this. Um, and, but on the outside, they appear, they can appear to be the nicest person. You can literally think that they are like the nicest person. Um, I certainly did. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, I was in a long-term relationship with this person and I literally did not know any of this until I figured out, you know, I found out about the infidelity and then I started discovering and I was like, oh you know, learning about narcissism and, you know, I have this person on a pedestal, I have no freaking clue. Because I can't, neurotypicals cannot imagine thinking like that. That most people, most people can't imagine having that kind of brain. Um, also, this person presented to have like a very high level of fairness and integrity and honesty. So that's what I thought. Um, so I don't know if this is helpful for you, but um, that is something that you may be dealing with. If you are dealing with a covert narcissist, there's a lot of other symptoms as well, but those are some of them that you might um, have had to deal with or been dealing with. And if so, I'm so sorry. I know the pain and you know the pain of coming to the realization that this is the kind of person that you are with when you thought this, the cognitive dissonance of that is very difficult. I understand this process is a long one to get um, to heal from. It's a very um, difficult process and you probably have um, complex PTSD from it. A lot of people do, or at least trauma symptoms. So I very much understand what you're going through and my heart goes out to you. Um, if you have any questions on these videos, you can certainly ask them or any comments. Um, I'd love to be able to share my insight. I also have a lot of great resources on my Facebook page um, that you can learn about um, not just overcoming this kind of trauma, overcoming all sorts of trauma, overcoming complex PTSD, all sorts of great, um, you know, therapies and remedies and books um, that may help you to get on your healing journey because I found by helping others to heal from these types of relationships and to avoid them in the future, it's really helping me a lot. It's helping me to heal. So that's the uh, reason I'm doing these. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.